Hello, I'm Mark Pugach, and you're listening to Highbury and Heels. Hi, and welcome to another episode of Highbury and Heels. Today, I'm joined by Sophia. We're missing both Amanda and Sophie, but you'll be hearing from them a little bit later. Hi, Sophia. How's it going? Well, how is it going? It's been a bit of a <laughs> crap week regarding our team, isn't it? I mean, it's not good yeah. and it doesn't look like it's going to get any better. Um, and there's not much more I can say that, well, I've got a lot to say, but we'll, we'll get onto that in a minute, won't we? Yeah, I know. And I also heard, by the way, the weather strategically changed after I left I London. Know. It was it was as if you... It's really weird because you're from a hot country. I thought yeah. you would have brought the heat, but you didn't. You brought the <laughs> snow and then you left and now it's gone nice again. I mean, what is that about? I know. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, it has been rough and cold, but today we're joined by a very special guest a BBC Radio 5 Live broadcaster, ITV anchor, and BT Sports Corps. He has also covered the World Cups, Olympic and Commonwealth Games, Wimbledon, cricket, rugby, boxing, and Champions League. He's also presented Match of the Day and Football Focus, Final Score, Sunday Grandstand, <laughs> World Darts Championship, and Open Golf Championship highlights. <laughs> He's also been a columnist for The Times, published his first book, Three Lions vs. the World, The Story of England at the World Cup, and he's a very good friend of our very own Sophia. Yay! His hobbies include gardening, pick keeping, goat keeping, <laughs> jam making, <laughs> history, politics, politics, and playing sports. I could probably go on for much longer mentioning his many achievements, but instead, let's hear from the man himself, Mr. Mark Pugach. Hey! Well, what about that? Thank you. <laughs> as, as Sophia knows, it's the goat keeping, which is the most important of all those things. It is. It's out there, Seema. We, we love your I'm fat goats. <laughs> we love your fat goats. She's, she's, fat, she's fat because she's pregnant, Sophia. No, it's, no she's always no, she's fat. Preg- Olive is pregnant. That's why she's fat. No, it's because you overfeed her. And, anyway. I overfeed, and I overfeed her. And I overfeed her. Well, every time Arsenal lose, I go and feed her something in consolation. That's why she's so fat. Oh, bless her. <laughs> Speaking of our club, oh, my God. Yes. We haven't had a great two weeks at all, actually. All season has been horrible. But if we want to look back at the last 10 days, I guess, we played City twice, Ostersunds and Brighton and lost <laughs> all four games. <laughs> I don't, even know, I don't even know why I'm laughing. It's not funny. It's re- but the, I feel like the only thing I can do is laugh because it, yeah. if I actually thought about it, I think I would cry. Like that poor bloke on BBC <laughs> 606. He was just, he sounded, I thought it was going to burst into tears. It was awful. But, you know, <sighs> Arsene Wenger has been taking a huge brunt of the blame for our performances, Pugas. Um, I personally don't think the players are immune, though. Against Brighton, they were once again poor mentally, physically. How would you dis- divide the blame between for what we're going through at the moment? Do you blame mostly us and do you blame the players? What What do you think it is? Well, it, it's it's uh, it's funny because I know Seema's in Dubai and I do a show on a Monday for Premier League TV, which goes around the world, which which I know is very mm. popular in the Middle East. It's with Dion Dublin yeah, and yeah. Don Hutchison. And I asked them today that. I said, two seasons ago when Chelsea were the champions, Mourinho was sacked by Christmas, wasn't he? Yeah. And um, everyone was going, oh, yeah. Mourinho, this, that and the other. But I said to, to Don and Dion, obviously playing the Premier League a lot, I said, how come you guys, the footballers, always get away with the blame? Mm. The majority of the blame, anyway. Mm-hmm. Because they do, don't they? Yeah. The, the teams do badly. And particularly because Wenger's been at Arsenal so long. We, we, I'm talking about we, the media and, and the fans, really. The fans were, the banners yesterday were Wenger out, weren't they? They weren't yeah. saying Mustafi yeah. out no. or, you know, I don't know, or Xhaka out. <laughs> so I, I, I'm not, not answering your question so far. It's just the reality of football that you can't sack 16 players if the squad's rubbish, but you can sack the manager. So uh, I think it's always the way that the players slightly get away with it compared with the manager. That's the reality, isn't it? The players have been pretty awful, but the manager's always the lightning rod. But don't you think because Arsene's been there so long and we've had a glut of players come through the club in how many, you know, in how 20 odd years, to me, the constant denominator is him so yeah. you know for me we need to personally i mean 
I think we need a change, which is why I can't blame all the players for it because I'm just saying, well, you know, you see the same, you see the same thing over and over again. It's like Groundhog Day. And to me, is it too simple to say that the players, it's, it lack a fragile and lack leadership because that's another thing that's aimed at them. Do you think that's the case as well? I mean, well, I- no one could really see any leadership, can they? No. Not, 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 not in the leadership that if you've watched Arsenal even for 20, you know, even for 10, 20 years that, that, that you would particularly associate with Arsenal. Not proper leadership, not Tony Adams' leadership or what's well, hard in the last 10 years really had, I've also had any leaders. Murtasaka, to be fair, was, was a leader, but not in, in that sense. No. I mean, Arsenal now, I'm just reading his tweet here, which is interesting. If Arsenal don't, th- th- this is the reality now. Forget the Champions League, that's gone. Arsenal need to get the Europa League for financial reasons. Forget AC yeah. Milan. I'm talking about fin- Arsenal yeah. need to finish sixth. If they don't, you, uh, with Europa League qualification, there could be about 70 million available. But Arsenal need to be careful because Burnley won the other day. Burnley yeah. still going to go to the Emirates as well. Yeah. For all this, you know, uh, this, that and the other about the Champions League. That's way, way, way gone. Everyone knows oh, that. Yeah. Uh, how are you going to get the Europa League now? How we could say that, it's, he's finally, because did you hear his press conference? He was like, oh, yeah, I think fourth is finally out of the way. Fourth had gone from last year. How he could even think that we were anywhere near fourth place is beyond me. And it, and it just begs belief. <laughs> Honestly, I was just like, what I are know. you talking about? What are you talking about? It, it, I th- listen, whichever side of the divide you are, and if you listen to this, the chances are you support Arsenal, but you may not do. Whether you're pro-Wenger, anti-Wenger as an Arsenal fan, or you just love football, everybody has a huge amount of respect for Arsene Wenger. Yeah. And it is t- mm. torturous watching him at the moment. For his sake, isn't it? For his sake. Yeah. You, you, I, I'm almost thinking, you know, he needs his best mate to take him out to dinner and say, mm. Arsene, do you really need this? Do you? This is not doing your health any good, <laughs> no. surely. Do you need this level of stress? Would it not be better to be carried out of the Emirates on your shield at the end of the season with everybody praising you for your massive achievements than trying to struggle on next season where does anybody think it would get any better next season? Nothing. They think it would get worse, yeah, don't they? I think so. And you end yeah, up skulking out the back door. I mean, don't you think? Yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, you, you mentioned um, his best mate, but what about his second-hand man, Steve Bold? Do you feel like where's his input or lack of and should he take any blame for not standing up for him for himself but, or to well, the club? Uh, I mean, this 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 is understandably when you look back to the part that Steve Bold had in, you know, probably the greatest defence of the Premier League has ever yeah. seen, and one of the best defence of footballs ever seen. But I think we have to ask the question: How much is he allowed to do? I mean, none of us really know the yeah. answer to. But I think yeah. we can probably have an educated guess, can't we? How much is Steve Bold actually allowed to do with the team? Yeah. And um, and either it's not a lot, and that's why they're not very good, or if it is a lot, he's not getting his point across. Does anybody believe that he'd fail to get his point across if he were really allowed to work with his defence? Really allowed mm-hmm. to work with the defence? I, I, I don't think people. I don't think people would think that's Steve Ball, would they? No, so, but that, if you then turn around and say, "Well, why is he doing the job then?" If you yeah, don't have much that was my next well, question. Exactly. But exactly. we've all got to work. Now, let's be honest. We've all got to work, haven't we? Yeah. So you think um, he's just taking yeah. a paycheck? I, I I can't I can't believe that he wouldn't want to do more. Right. I can't believe that he mm. wouldn't want to do more. Can you? No, this but is what it, this is my argument. You know, I say it but, all the time. But 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 Arsene Wenger is the most important man at Arsenal by a long, 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 long way. Um and and you know, in in every aspect of the club, which is possibly not a healthy thing, and, and by the way, which will never be the case with the next manager, and they've realised that. You know, we had yeah. Mr. Alex Ferguson at Man U and Arsene Wenger here. They'll never be the same again. There'll be much more of a, a spreading of the power, won't there? In and we, We've already seen it, haven't we, with Arsenal? With yeah. a new director of football. I know we're not allowed to call him that in Arsene Wenger's ear shop, but that's what he is. <laughs> <laughs> a new director of football and a new, um, a new head of recruitment. So, uh, listen, I'm sure Steve Bold would love to do more. He would, mm. he would. So, I mean, in our... Premier League game against City, um, we, the first half ended 3-0. We both had three shots on target. Do you think it was bad luck that we didn't convert any, or do you think it's a lack of confidence? Are we not efficient in front of goal? What is the problem? 
Well, I think as ever in anything in football, it's 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 all of the above, isn't it? And also, you know, and also mm-hmm. you've got to take into the fact that, that that they are the best team in the league by miles, and that third goal showed it, didn't it? I mean, yeah. that third goal was sensational. Yeah. But clearly, Arsenal's confidence is through the floor at the moment. They've been beaten by City comfortably five days earlier, four days earlier in the in the League Cup final, and then they play them again in a half empty stadium. I mean, they're not stupid, the players. They know what's going on with the fans, um, yeah. and they're probably looking at Arsene Wenger and going. Arsene Wenger said this time last year, his lack of clarity about what he was going to do made it difficult for the team. Well, he's in danger of doing the same thing again, isn't he? Yeah. His lack of clarity. Yeah. So I think I think I everything in life so far, you know, it's it's a mixture of everything that you mentioned there when it came to the the, the, the Man City League game. Well, did you think about this um, rumour or it's, I think there was a, a article in The Guardian mentioned by David Heitner about the players had kind of like a meeting together and one of them was nearly in tears or whatever. Um, if they did have that kind of meeting, why is it not reflected? Why was the fight not reflected on the pitch? I don't understand that. What, in the, in the second Man City game? Yeah. I yeah. Their confidence is through the floor, isn't it? I think their confidence is through the floor. And it's it's... It's a weird thing. I mean, as you know, so far working, you know, where you do with me and everywhere, you know, you're around footballers a lot and you talk to them a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and, and it's, 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 it's a sort of unquantifiable thing. You and I and see where we might go, people say, go, well, what do you mean you can, you, you lack confidence, but you start thinking about your game. You start, you start, uh, not being confident on the ball. You start not wanting the ball. If you get the ball, you want to shovel it on straight away. You start, Sometimes you start thinking deliberately about getting the ball and controlling it and then moving it on. It mm. all moves so much slower. Mm, yeah. That's why sometimes it manifests itself as not trying. I never get that. I don't believe that. I don't believe that for yeah. a second. Well, I, I don't believe that. for a second they've stopped trying. No. I really don't. I just speaking think of confidence, confidence is gone. Yeah, speaking of confidence, I mean, Petr Cech, uh, he tweeted yesterday, or was it the day before? Yesterday. If you want to win a game away from home in the best league in the world, your goalkeeper cannot concede two goals like I did today. It's simply not possible. The team fought back, but the damage was done. I mean, that alone shows, I don't know, for me, reading that, it kind of made me nervous as well because it, he's letting himself be vulnerable in front of everyone. What do you think of that tweet? But I think it shows what sort of person Petr Cech is. I don't mm. think we ever doubted that, did we? Where, you know, and Chelsea fans loved him in his time there. That you know what a what a you know what sort of man he is. It just he's made he's made more mistakes that have led to goals than anybody else in the league this season. I'm afraid to say wow. it's, it's not necessarily yeah. a goalkeeper who is that, but he's made six. I mean, I did it today in in the, in the show I was talking about earlier. Um, six six mistakes which have actually led to goals. <laughs> I think I wow. think it just it very because this doesn't happen to Arsenal very often. Um, mm. Everyone is going blimey, what what's going on? This is Arsenal, yeah. but it's just. It's just, um, it's a footballing illness, isn't it? Which has just infected the whole squad. Yeah. Um, and, mm-hmm. and the fact that it is uh, that Arsene Wenger, and we've been having this conversation for what, how long so far? Five years in yes. the studio? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> five yeah. years? Yeah, five years. <laughs> which, is, which is why Arsenal never more than two or three, even when they won the cup and he said, oh, he's going to stay for two years, we all went, well, he's yeah. only going to be two or three defeats away from this all flaring up again. And it has. Yeah. <laughs> and it has. Yeah. Like anyone's surprised, are they? No. Seema, you're not but, surprised, are you? Oh, no, definitely not. No. Well, well, I will say something. I have been a very, um, I'm very, I used to be very pro Wenger. I still love the man. Like you said, everyone respects him, but it got to a point now where even someone like me who's had so much love for him cannot see it anymore. I just, I feel like it's, it's just been going worse and worse and worse from season to season. But um, you mentioned uh, Petr Cech making the most mistakes in all in the Premier League. Would you substitute him for Ospina right now? <laughs> no, no, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Exactly. So <laughs> I tell you, I tell you, who I would have substituted him for Martinez. Chesney. Yeah. Oh yeah. So if I would have done. I, I, I thought Chesney. I thought simply, I really wanted Chesney to keep goal for Arsenal, and he did. But you look yeah. back on it, he was just a bit too young and a yeah. bit too immature, wasn't he? But then he? that's what Arsene does. He throws them yeah. in and then hangs them out to dry when it all goes yeah. it goes pear-shaped. He does it all the time. You've seen I it. Was, I mean, 
Yeah, go on, go on, Pugas. No, no, I'm just saying. I think I, you look at him now at Juve. He's going to take off from Buffon season after or after than that. Yeah. Um. Uh, um. And uh, you know he looks fantastic. Mm. Um. Yeah. But, but he's, he, he, he. So no, Sim. I, I wouldn't substitute him. I'm afraid. <laughs> I think. I think the re, the reality is, if I said to you that I think that Arsenal need a complete new goalkeeper and back four. Yeah. Would anyone disagree with me? Not I, 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 I like, oh, yeah. I like Bellerin. I, actually, I have to, I've got to be honest with you. I like Bellerin so much more now after his Oxford Union stuff. I thought that was fantastic. <laughs> I'm being serious. Yeah. I thought for yeah. a 22-year-old from Catalonia, or from Barcelona, where, you know, he's not maybe he's not from Barcelona itself, to speak in a second language so mm. eruditely about football and the environment and yeah. fashion, I thought that was brilliant. Is he a good right back? You know, he's a, he's he's a, he's he's well, he's not being coached particularly, is he? No, and this is what he yeah. well, you, and I, you and I know somebody who could turn him into a really oh, good right back. Don't we just? Don't, we? don't yeah. we just? And it's Arsenal's and... greatest ever right back, Lee Dixon, could Bang. turn him in, but I don't think he's been coached. So I, I I don't want him to leave Arsenal, but I suspect Juve, if we're interested in, might go. Monreal's been very consistent, but he's getting on. Uh, Koscielny mm-hmm. looks like he's struggling badly, doesn't he? He's ba- Achilles problems. Yeah. And Mustafi's a bit all over the place here, I think. And and Czech is past his best, I'm afraid. I think they need an entire new back five. But yeah, I agree. But it all boils down to you know. Also, it's you can have the you can have the best defenders in the world playing for our team. But I'm sorry if you've got Arsene Wenger at the helm, not coaching. They, I remember Sophie, our, the, our other pod sister, who's not on today. Yeah. Last week she said we could have Messi come and join our team, and Arsene Wenger would make him average. Well, I, it, it, somebody said something really interesting to me. I'm just reading a comment about Koscielny. Uh, by the way, going back to exactly what we said, we are not confident in our quality individually and collectively. That mm. says it all. That explains why. Somebody said something interesting to me the other day and said. You know, for, you know, Koscielny is a regular in the French team. Mm-hmm. Bellerin is in the in a Spanish squad. Mustafi has played in the last two, I think, um, national uh, the two uh, the Euros and the World Cup for Germany. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. Jacka is 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 a is a linchpin of the Swiss squad. Yeah, they c- but they really all very back good players. But the, right, this so is what uh, is this, going on? Well, this is Chambers what I played want. for England during his first season. Chambers' his first season at Arsenal played for England. I remember playing a right back against Tottenham. He played well. But, Something is going on. Well, this is what I wanted to players. ask you. Why players? You're talking about all these players that have p- played for their national teams on a regular basis. Kalasinac, who made the Bundesliga team of the year last season yeah. when it was full of Bayern players, he didn't play for Bayern. He made that team. They all seem to have got, gone backwards already. It, it used to take two years. Now it's like it's taking six months. Lacazette. Yeah. Came to us, was scoring. He's suddenly gone. Even before the injury, he started. He stopped scoring. What is going on? Why is this happening in our team? I mean, it's the sixty-five million dollar question, <laughs> so far, isn't it? I mean, <laughs> everyone's going to say it's Arsene Wenger. They're not being coached. We, we, if we, if uh, unless Steve Bold is, agrees to come on your pod, and frankly, if you can get Sol Campbell, you might get Steve Bold. You know. <laughs> We're not. We're not going to know, are we? We're not going to know what we what they do. But uh, it's completely fair. These are very good players. It's not they're just off their peak. They're way off, it, yeah. aren't they? They're yeah. way off. The yeah. level dropped. Mean, was good at the beginning of the season yeah. yesterday. Well, blimey, I, I've, I've got a headache just watching him clean out Charlotte. Yeah. That was unbelievable, <laughs> it was wasn't it? But yeah, um, I'd love. To, I, yeah, uh, listen, we all know what we're saying. Are they being coached yeah. properly? We 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 we're all we're all having an educated guess as to whether they are or not. Hmm. In that case, what are your expectations from Aubameyang? Because he has had a very slow start. I mean, we can, I have been hearing a lot from German fans that anyway, he is a player that will barely get seven, eight touches in a game. But once he gets a chance, he is clinical. And yeah. we saw that one chance against uh, Brighton. But yeah. do you think that is all he has to offer? No, I think he's he's very, very quick. I think if Arsenal play better, but Arsenal... Uh, <laughs> The, the truth is, and you 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 uh, you know this, and so far you going every week know this. The the old uh, from the neutral. Well, at least you st- Arsenal still play the best football. That's absolute content. Oh, it hasn't been like football. that for years. No, they haven't played yeah. good football for two three years. Yeah. The, 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 the team, um, what can we call them? The sort of Nasri, Fabregas, Van Persie team of eight years ago, which which threatened to win the league once and then Eduardo broke his ankle. That was a real shame, all of it, because they were doing really well. That team played fantastic football, but they played quickly. 
this team are so laborious, aren't they? My point yeah. being, my point being, um, Seema, that's, you know, Aubameyang is quick. Even Lacazette, even Lacazette, I was, you know, watching the games when he was playing. The ball is passed around so slowly, laboriously in front of him. Mm. Uh, he, yeah. he didn't really have any many opportunities, no. did he? No. And he's making uh, yeah. the runs as well. You see him yeah, making yeah, the runs. Yeah, yeah. And the ball's not coming to him. And you're just like, yeah. well, what? If if that was me, you, you'd feel like you were banging your head against a brick wall because yeah. you're doing this over and over again and nobody's getting the ball to you. So I, if it was me, I'd be like, well, I'm, why am I going to bother? I might as well save my energy because it's never going to get here. And he, yeah. he, he must feel be so frustrated as he must be so because you saw Abamyang's quality yesterday because that goal was the the way that he got the position he got in the box and the, even the little back flipped back heel it was superb and you just yeah, think, it was great. you yeah. see that and you think well you know it's possible so why is this not happening on a regular basis you, you know even Mkhitaryan his cro- his corners and his crossing yesterday was superb and I think we got onto one of those balls. Not at all. And I'm just like, what is going on? Yeah, at the back, they're just running through, cutting through us like knife through butter. It's un- it's unreal. It just annoys me. And another thing that annoys me is, okay. <laughs> there are lots of things that annoy me. <laughs> there are a lot of things everybody. that annoy <laughs> There are a lot of things. That, but one of the things that really annoys me, I, it's like, I like having our players on social media. Don't get me wrong. Mm. But the thing that annoys me is when they come on and they start talking about how we feel just as bad as you do. Like Jack put out, he put out his tweet late last night when all the English fans had gone to bed, I noticed, but anyway. And he said, <laughs> I'm sorry to the Gooners out there. You deserve better. That's all I have to say. I know it's been a difficult time at this period and blah, de, blah, blah, rare, 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 whatever. Now, I much preferred Petr Cech's honest tweet talking about it was my mistake um, I it, those two goals did us in. That's it. How do you feel about when? How do you feel? Do you, would you rather hear from the players or just not at all? From your, you know, as speaking as a fan, and um, and and speaking as a presenter, you know, working in the media. How do you feel about seeing all this? No, I, well, I, I I like the fact that they tweet because actually, um, unless clearly, you know, they're going to be interviewed in the newspapers or on radio or TV, you don't really ever hear from them. So I like I really like that sort of direct interaction. I was a bit with you, Safar, and Simi would have seen this after the League Cup final when he spoke, yeah. and I thought, all right, he's going to take it on the chin, and actually, he complained about this, that, and the other, and you go, oh, for goodness sake, Jack, don't complain about Aguero's first goal; it was weak defending, and da 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 da. So I, I, I you know, I. I like the fact that he can talk to the fans directly. And, 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 and I take your point about when he put the tweet out last night. But, you know, the point, the fact is that everybody would still see it today, wouldn't they? And he has taken it on the chin. He has taken it on the chin. Fair in the sense, he says, I know it's not good enough. I know we need to do better. I know we're letting you down. You know, please stay with us. It's, I, I think that's good. I mean, I think that's really good. Better than just sort of hiding. Better than what people might think, which is, oh, they're just going to go home and you know hide behind their ivory towered towered houses and not worry about it and just pick up their paychecks. Okay. So going from Jacks and Petr Cech's tweet, what did you make of Arsene Wenger's quote in the press conference? Um, the, <laughs> oh, yeah. the the trousers. It's it's easy to take the trousers off as well. But when you are naked completely, <laughs> you have to find a shirt and try to put it on again. Get dressed normally again. What? Do you know what that meant? No, I mean... No, no, I don't. Do you think he's lost it? Do you think he's finally lost it? I think he's just desperately looking for answers. Or maybe because Carlos Carvajal is coming out with so many good analogies at the moment, isn't he? We've had all the meat <laughs> on the barbecue. We've yeah. Had deep- yeah. <laughs> we had rock and roll at the weekend, didn't we? Swansea played the rock and roll and West Ham couldn't deal with it. Maybe yeah. he's just trying. But I've never heard Wenger talk in riddles before. No. I've never heard him talk. I know. Before. Which is why it's just so odd. It, it was, was so yeah. odd. <laughs> I, I mean, he's, he's, well, he's, he's obviously saying, when, you know, Arsenal need to start again from the bottom, you know, in terms of rebuilding confidence and try and win some matches and, you know. Arsenal are naked at the moment because they've lost four in a row. But it was it was slightly bizarre, wasn't it? Which is why it I think he's, which is why I think he's, very he's, lo- <laughs> he's losing it because I've no, it, it kind of remember when Eric Cantona did the trawlers in <laughs> when the fish the seafood. Oh, I, I was there. That I was in that press conference. Were you? 
What yeah, was... yeah, I was. Yeah. Okay, so that when was he... absolutely brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> so, so when you were sat there and he was talking about the trawlers and the fishermen, what did you did you get what he meant or were you just like what is going on? No, I think I got what he meant. You know, it, it, in yeah, you know, it's it's in terms of um, you know catch it, ca- in terms of catching the big fish, as it were, which is obviously Cantona was was the you know was the was the talking point of English football at the time. Yeah. But yeah, but the, he was enigmatic at the best of times, Cantona, wasn't he? So that yeah. was in keeping with him. Yeah. Whereas, um, whereas now, uh, for, for Arsene Wenger to be like this, uh, you're going, ooh, hang on a second, what, what, what's, what's all this about Arsene? Yeah. What's, 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 what is going on? I mean, the worst thing is he just looks, he looks miserable, doesn't he? Yes. He looks so yeah. unhappy, and you know yeah. that he's going to go home and he's going to mull over it and probably watch, you know, two more games from around the world at home. And yeah, just, you know what? I want a friend to put an arm around him, don't you? Yes. I think everybody does. Oh, I yeah, think, definitely. I think because we can't, I think because we, because we, I still, I still love him. I, 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 I always Everybody will. in football does. Every, I'm mean, honestly talking today to Don and Dion and talking about I mean, oh, Tottenham or whatever, that, but that's all part of the tribal, you know, pantomime exactly. of football. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Most 95% of people in football really respect him and they, irrespective of whether they like us or not, they do not want to see him finish like this. No, exactly. Yeah, in the sense that if he not. said tomorrow, right, I'm going to go at the end of the season, it might go one of two ways. The players might really down tools and, you know, and go, right, OK, he's gone. It doesn't really matter. I don't think so. I think the players would say, right, let's give him something to go out on a high. Uh, you know, I, I, I don't yeah. think Arsenal going to win the Europa League. I really Oh. Yeah, because Atletico Madrid are yeah. good league. I don't think also. I don't think also necessarily going to be AC Milan. By the way, I really don't. Yeah, but actually, I think that's that's the players <laughs> would put in a real shift if they knew he was leaving. Yeah, definitely. I mean, speaking of AC Milan, Arsenal initially we thought we had a slightly better squad than Milan due to, to due to the trio in the attack, but now Milan have been on an amazing run as of late. Yeah. The Benucci, I don't know how to say his name, Romagno, Romagnoli <laughs> partnership. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> has become like such a big force, and Milan are second best in history when it comes to the Euro- European identity. Um, we saw it a few years ago uh, when I think it was Dortmund they knocked out. They were knocked out by a weaker Liverpool side. Do you think Arsenal can face a similar fate now? Well, I, I think it's going to be extremely difficult to get past Milan at the moment. Yeah. Re- I really do. Milan they haven't are, lost this year. They haven't lost this year. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, Gattuso, we all remember Gattuso from Italy and, uh, and, and, his, and his time yeah. at Rangers I and mean, his row with Joe Jordan a few years ago, the Tottenham game against Milan. I mean, he's really got them going. Um, I remember being in the San Siro for one of the Champions League last 16 exits when Arsenal lost 4-0 there and Ibrahimovic scored a couple. And I think, you know, Milan... Um, with all their European Cup history, are really believing again. I think yeah. it's good. I, I, listen, if there's any question that Arsenal are second favourites in that tie. Yeah. Agreed. Really second yeah. favourites in that tie. Um, <laughs> and they've suddenly, and they were very good in the uh, in the group stages, but since Gattuso's taken over, they're completely transformed. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's going to be, it's going to be at the moment, At the moment, if you, 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 if you want to, um, if you want to convince me that Arsenal are favourites, I, I, I'm listening to you, ladies. Oh, but I no. can't see it from where I am. No, no, no. I'm not even going to try because no. I, I, I don't think we're going to even win either leg. I think we're going to lose at home, and I think yeah. we're going to lose away. I just cannot. I agree. I cannot see any way that we're going to win either of those ties. I really, really don't. And, and, then, and then the board, and not the board. It's Stan Kroenke. Let's be blunt. Then he's got a decision to make. If Arsenal are out the Europa League in 10 days' time, he's got a decision to make, hasn't he? Okay, yeah. so if that's right. So I'm thinking, as I've just said, I think the Milan tie is going to go badly. Arsene, when Arsene finally leaves, be it this summer, next summer, or maybe even next week, if, as you say, Kroenke has to make a decision, which direction do we go in? Do we go for a defensive coach like... Simeone or Allegri, or should we try and preserve the identity, the attacking identity that Arsene built, and go for someone like Sari or Tuchel, who is still unemployed? What would you go for? What a what a question. Well, I tell you, the first thing I would do, uh, the first thing I would do is whoever they bring in as number one. Mm-hmm. I think it's incredibly important to reconnect with the fans who are completely distant and fed up. Yeah, and so as or either as his number two and or on his coaching staff, I think there needs to be a level of arsenalization. Mm-hmm. I really do. Agreed. And I think that would be 
I just think that would yeah. be a politically shrewd move. Um, Martin Keown would work there, a drop of a hat. Sol Campbell, obviously, you had him on last week yeah. and made all those waves. Tony Adams, I noticed tonight, says, I go back there in the drop of a hat. Obviously, people are talking about Mikhail Arteta, who's who's extremely highly regarded as a coach. Yeah. So I, th- I think... I think whether I think whether I don't think it'll be Ancelotti. I think they'd want to go for the next generation. But I think I think it's very important whether it be Sarri or Tuchel or Jardim or whoever oh, or yeah. Joachim Le, or Joachim Love or well maybe Ancelotti. Maybe it is Ancelotti for two years. I think it's really important that the number two or the number two and three have a big Arsenal connection. No, I'm sorry, sorry, sorry. That number two, number three might be Vieira. Might be oh. of course it might be Thierry Henry. It might be Bergkamp. You know, who knows? But do, OK, so speaking of Thierry Henry, what did you make of his comments regarding the managerial position? Do you because to me, I think he's too inexperienced to have as a number one. But he seems I guess he seems to think he's not. Um, would you t- if, the, if if you heard that Thierry was coming to be the next manager, how would you feel about that? I would feel that whoever the next manager is, a bit like after Fergie, yeah. it is a massive job. Yeah. I mean, that would yeah. be, uh, it would be a tall order for an experienced manager, let alone for a manager in his first job. Yeah, agreed. Uh, you know, yeah. I, I, that would be, but, you know, obviously he's, he's, he's working at, at Belgium with, um, with Roberto Martinez, but that would be mm-hmm. one heck of a punt for both of them, wouldn't it? It really would be. But it would get the, it would, yeah, would, of course it would get the crowd on side immediately, but that, See, would, be, I that think, would be a punt, wouldn't it? Do you not think that yeah. would be better off getting like a... In, so seeing how it went for, you know, for Manchester United, do you, I think, personally, I think we should go for like more of an interim manager and maybe Ancelotti is that interim manager because I don't think long term... Ancelotti's quite right because I think he's too similar to Wenger. I think he's too nice as a shul- as an arm around the shoulder. I think we need to go for somebody tougher. So maybe that's the way to go. Maybe. Well, the, the the other thing is, if you work on the basis that whoever the next manager is, it's an impossible. It, well, it's not an impossible job actually because you're taking over Arsenal at a lower level than Mo- Moyes was taking over Manchester United. Yeah. But it's a much harder job because you are taking over from Wenger. Yeah. It it it, it may well be that. Um, to give the job to a more experienced man rather than, you know, than somebody in their, their 40s mm. is actually mm. quite clever because you're basically saying, listen, you're a stopgap for two years. We've had a bit of a nightmare. Just 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 calm everybody down. Get a bit of structure and organisation in this team yeah. for a couple of years. And then and then we can appoint, you know, Mikel Arteta or Thierry Henry or somebody with a bit more experience. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I would I would understand the logic in that, because whoever it is, despite the fact it's ending on a low note, well, he might go with the Europa League, but I doubt it. <laughs> despite the fact it's ending on a low note, it's going to be very hard for the next manager, isn't it? Very. There's no bones about that. Yeah. Yeah, that's... But, it'll be, but, it, but, but it'll be fresh. Seema, you can imagine next time you go to uh, the Emirates and there's a new Arsenal manager, it'll be very exciting and fresh because it'll be because it'll be different. Mm. Mm. Yeah, a little sad, but yeah, definitely exciting and fresh. But yeah. what about, what do you think about the club spending power then? I mean, right now the fans all think it's Wenger, the one, the one that's not spending the money. Do you think we would be able to splash the cash, as they say? And do you think the board will kind of want to spend the money? And do you think we'll still be able to attract um, players considering, hope, well, hopefully we will win the Europa League, but I doubt it. But if we do make the Champions League, will we still well, be able no, to attract they have been spend, Let's be honest, they've been spending... Good money in the last couple of years. Let's not pretend they haven't. And they've just given, they've just given Ozil 350 a week and their wage bill is probably, their wage bill will be about what? I should think it'll be about 210 or so, something like that. That's gone yeah. up quite a lot and it'll be an awful lot more than Tottenham's wage bill. Let's not beat around the bush. But do you an not think, but do you not think they're spending a lot of money on players that other teams don't want? Well, uh, uh, yes, yeah, I know what you mean by well. Because yeah, we're not yes. we're not buying the top top players. I mean, you know, I love Özil. He's he's my current favourite player. But would he still be here if Man United really wanted him? If City really wanted him, would he? Nobody came in for him. No, 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 they didn't. No, no, uh, absolutely. And um, you know, you, you're spending three hundred, three hundred fifty on on Özil, and the people said. You know, he spent 70 million on Mustafi and Jacker, which is <laughs> exactly. hard at the moment, isn't it? 
Well, it's hard at the moment, isn't it? The pair of them, really. Yeah. They need they need to justify that. Yeah, I mean, they both come from clubs that are, I mean, good clubs, but they're not title winning clubs. And I think that could be one of our biggest problem is that we don't have enough players coming in that have the mentality to actually compete for titles. So I don't know. I would like to see more of the Ozils and the Alexis's, despite the fact that I really wanted Alexis to leave. But if we're going to keep finding players from Gladbach and Val- well, Valencia is doing well this year, but Valencia and yeah. those kind of clubs, it makes a big difference. But do you well, think we'll think, still be able uh, to get players like Madrid, Barcelona, Bayern Munich? I think what what happens, Seema, is, and I think when people write this sort of last three or four years of Arsene Wenger, so uh, Ozil signed, and that, that was fantastic, obviously. Right, Real Madrid didn't want him, but still, I, I got Arsenal. Then they signed Sanchez off the back of the World Cup, um, mm. having uh, having won uh, the FA Cup in 2014. Then in the summer of 2015, when he really should have gone for it, he only signed Petr Cech. And that was a massive yeah. error, a yeah. massive error. That yeah. was the time, because they'd signed Ozil, they'd signed Sanchez, so two world-class players are going, right, come on, add two more now, really go for it. Um, and so to answer your question, I think he had his moment. And I think he had his moment to attract the very uh, to a, carry on attracting really top class players. And now it's going to be incredibly hard because they want to play in the Champions League. They want to play in the Champions League. You've still got they have still got the London factor. And, you know, and that is a factor. But of course, ironically, it's less of a factor than it once was because there are more because there are more good teams in London now because yeah. of Tottenham. Well, Tottenham, yeah, make it much, Tottenham make it harder than it was two years ago where you could have gone. I want to go to London, <laughs> you know, Chelsea are Chelsea, but maybe they don't want me. I'll go to Arsenal. They're Champions League and they're yeah. London. Well, Arsenal are <laughs> Champions League now. Tottenham are Champions League. Can new we, stadium. Can we stop saying that, please? It's too well, yeah, but, but Arsenal, I'm afraid Arsenal have been, Arsenal have been, I think Arsenal have been, I think they've been a bit complacent, if I'm going to be honest. I think there was too much, oh, you know, they'll always be top four and they know what they're doing and the board probably thought, well, you know, is anyone else going to catch us up? Well, they have. Tottenham and Liverpool have overtaken them, haven't they? Mm, They've overtaken them. Mm. Well, you were talking about Chelsea and um, saying that, you know, Tottenham have made things difficult, but Chelsea, once again, have gone from winning the title one season to underachieving the next. Do you think, um, you know, looking at how Arsene Wenger deals with our players and they don't seem to get reprimanded. Do you think Conte, the way that Conte handles his big players, you know, he sold Diego Costa and now he's leaving David Luiz out in the wilderness. Do you think that's the way we should be going? Yeah, but the, what, what, the, the thing about Chelsea is, is that they, they run contrary to every single law of football that we're all told about aren't we we're always told you've got to be stable Mm. you know the only way to success is stability but Chelsea chuck that all out the window they change their manager every two years and they're and they're always winning things aren't they so they 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 a a Chelsea friend of mine said to me other day and he's absolutely right he said he said look at Arsenal you've had a cult of the manager for a long time look at Man U they obviously did with Alex Ferguson he said look at Liverpool now they've got a complete cult of the manager they love Klopp he said, look at Tottenham, Pochettino, best manager they've had in 25 years. He said, Chelsea, we like the players. We like winning. We're not really fussed who our manager is because he's always changing. Mm. That's about to happen again, isn't it? Yeah. Do we think Conte's going to be there next season? Not mm. really. No. So I think, I think I, I, I'd think answer your question so far by looking at it the other way around. I think that's the manager at Chelsea knows that. He right. knows that, mm. doesn't he? He's not the most important person at the club. The owner is at Chelsea. Yep. Always will be. Mm. He'll always be the owner. And frankly... Yeah. If you've given over a billion pounds to the club, I think I would want to be the top man as well. <laughs> you know, I, I want to be the top man. I wouldn't want it necessarily to be the manager. So it's, it's you know, they're completely different scenarios, completely different clubs run completely different ways. Mm. Um, and that's and it, and it, it, wor- it worked for Arsenal up to a point about the transition to the Emirates, staying in the top four. It even, you'd argue, worked to the point that Arsenal started winning trophies again. But now yeah. it's just, you know, starting to slip off. But it works for Chelsea. Yeah. It works for Chelsea. <laughs> and the chances are they'll, you know, if Chelsea changed their manager next summer, we wouldn't necessarily be surprised if they came back and had another good season next season, would we? No, not at all. No, <laughs> that's what they do. Not at all. But speaking of managers, I mean, I personally think Pep is a wonderful manager. Oh. And it guts me that we never got him when everybody knew he wanted to come to us. 
Um, I love that he adapts his tactics wherever he goes and he still seems to roll with the times. Mourinho, on the other hand, seems really stuck in his ways and his style no longer fits modern football. Would you agree with that or do you think there's another reason why he's fallen behind? Is he similar to Arsene in this respect? Yeah, it's a really it's a really good talking point, isn't it? Listen, what Pep's doing is absolutely fantastic and the way that they're playing and that they're you know, they were walking by the end of the game yesterday against Chelsea and they won it. It was so comfortable, even at one nil, wasn't it? How weird um, was that though? Yeah, it was weird. And the way yeah. that they weren't even pressing Chelsea yeah. really was really odd. But, even but, we weren't that bad. <laughs> no. Well, um, I, 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 oh, we I, I can understand why people say that. Um, I think Mourinho would point. Mourinho clearly will point to his record and say how successful he's been and how many times he's won. And he's obviously won the Champions League twice with two different teams as well. I th- um, horses for courses, isn't he? He's different to Pep. He just is. It's yeah. The way he goes about it is different. Um, it, the City, are, City are clearly better to watch. Uh, listen, this will be this will be rattling. This will be rattling um, uh, Mourinho, won't it? It oh, really kill will. Him. It, it really definitely. will be rattling. He, oh, think... and rattling him is maybe too exact. It'll be it'll be irritating and that everybody is eulogizing so much about Pep. Yeah. Um, I think he hates Pep more than he hates. he hates Pep more than he hates Wenger. I think. Yeah. <laughs> something. Yeah. But I think I think I think net, I think already already we can say from Mourinho's point of view, I say from Man U's point of view. Listen, they might win the Champions League, Manchester United. He's won it twice. Think about his tactics with Inter Milan. Think about that yeah. famous match when he went to the New Camp and it completely did them tactically. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Twenty ten, and then they went and won it. But do they have the players though? Yeah, yeah. To win the Champions League, yeah, yeah. you think so? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, they're, yeah, they're all fit. Yes, definitely. If they're all fit, defense. Oh, they've got the best goalkeeper in the world. Yeah, he's I, I accept, amazing. I except you might say to me, defensively, are they good enough? Right. Are they good enough defensively? I would accept that. But you've got Pogba, especially if you play him in a three. Let's say I don't know. You played him with Herrera and uh, I don't know McTominay, who's doing brilliantly. Yeah. And look who they've got to choose from up front: Lukaku. You know, your friend Sanchez, Martial, oh, Rashford, okay. Lingard. You know, oh yeah, they could. De- you could see Man United in, in knockout matches. Definitely, I can yeah, see them. True. I don't think they will. Yeah. I could, I wouldn't, it wouldn't be a great shock, would it? No. I mean, we can probably go on all day about where we are, where we should be, but I think we should move on to a more positive subject, your amazing career. <laughs> so earlier in your career, it seemed you had a big passion for cricket. How did that shift in your job to football? Oh, I mean, I'm, I absolutely adore cricket. I absolutely love it. Yeah, I, I know you a, do. <laughs> it's just, I, mean, I properly love cricket. You know, it's just a very, it's just a very practical thing, which is if you look at the people who cover cricket, uh, broadcasting wise internationally, most of them have played cricket. <laughs> most of them played test cricket. So it wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't like a, a conscious decision. I think like any like any job, but particularly this job, it's just a question of where the opportunities are, mm. and the opportunities for someone like me were were in football, not in cricket, um, and that that's just that's just a practical approach. But it doesn't mean mm. I, I don't I love cricket any less, and I go to test matches whenever I can, and you know it's it's uh, I mean as Safar knows, I'm, we're always talking about cricket, <laughs> we do. especially with West Indies for England. Yeah. And, um, and, yeah. Yeah, I absolutely, I absolutely love cricket, and I want it to fight its corner, and I want it to fight its its way in sport. Because much as we all love football, we don't want football to suffocate everything, which no. in, at times it's in it's in danger of doing. But it, it seems just very a very practical thing that, that that football is where the opportunities for someone like me are. Yeah. Mm. So you you talk about your love of cricket. Um, you also present boxing, rugby, and football, of course. Love the foot boxing. I mean, the Groves Eubank fight the other day was fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> that was absolutely <laughs> great. <laughs> so, and speaking of all those sports, which is, are there any you don't like? And out of those ones I just mentioned, which is your favourite? Well, I, I mean, because I, I, I grew up in an era in the 70s. And my dad was a cricket nut who ran a cricket club, which still goes to this day. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, uh, we were very much uh, football in the winter and cricket in the summer. You know, there was a, there was a divide in those days. Yeah, there really was a divide. Mm. I mean, this, this, the divide now is well, it's constant it's now. Clear, it? Yeah, there's no there's no divide. So it was football in the, it was football and rugby as well because you know obviously I covered rugby for ITV, which I really enjoyed. Yeah. And I played you know I used to play rugby at school. So so we were very much football and cricket. 
the one thing I don't really ever get to grips with, and um, and Seema Safar really hates it when I say this. I don't Formula get Formula One. one. I just don't on, get Formula I One. Formula one. I, don't, um, I don't get it. It's, it's, I was I listen. was scared to tell you guys I don't get cricket at all. <laughs> no, well, no, but I understand. I understand people who don't get cricket because it's. I know cricket's quite. But you know, I always say the same thing. If someone says to me they don't like a game, it's like someone says I don't like spinach. I said, "What well, have you tried it?" They go, "Yeah, I've eaten lots of spinach. I don't like it. That's fine." Yeah. So people go, "I don't like yeah. spinach. I've never tried it." I go, well, how do you know you don't like it then? Mm. I've really <laughs> tried with Formula One, and Safar is always trying to tell me how brilliant it is. Well, that's but me. I but that's just... me in rugby. Like I've tr- I've that's really like, tried yeah, yeah. with rugby, but I just yeah. can't get with it. I just cannot no. get with it. It's just yeah, yeah. That's very, oh, very, so it's just Formula One then that you don't yeah, like. Listen, don't get me wrong. I know how brave those guys are, and and you know the women drivers, of course, guys and girls are driving. Don't get me wrong. I know how they are. And fair enough. Where I live, I live in sort of I I live um, around sort of um, uh, you know Formula One factory area around where mm. I live, sort of Oxfordshire, Northamptonshire. Mm. Oh yeah, there are loads of them around here. Yeah, they and are. They're clearly brilliant geniuses, and they've all got you know double physics at A level and all that malarkey. But it just it, it just doesn't just leaves me cold. Fair I'm enough. afraid. <laughs> yeah, there we are. I like it all. <laughs> you like a lot. <laughs> <laughs> so, what made you an Arsenal fan, and what's your earliest memory of supporting the Gunners, and your best one as well? Um, my mother bought me a bag with Arsenal on it when I was six. Oh, wow. Literally. Oh. Yeah. yeah. She went to the shops and she said, I'm bored of you carrying your, um, of your boots around in a, uh, in a plastic bag. And she said, came back and oh. said, here's this bag and here's a bag. I went, all right, thank you very much. That was it. Literally. Wow. That's <laughs> yeah, yeah. brilliant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They were terrible. <laughs> yeah, I mean, oh, they were, it was 1974. They were terrible. They really were. <laughs> <laughs> they really were. But it's funny, you know, I mean, the Safar knows this. When you work in the business, you have to sort of, um, you know, you have to sort of divide yourself in half. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And put your yeah. work head on and go, right, this is, you know, this is what we need to talk about. And this is the way we need to approach it. Um, and um, it, it, uh, quite rightly so, you know, in that in that dispassionate sense that you would, you, you that if I were watching TV, I would expect somebody or listen to the radio, I'd expect somebody to be. Um, mm. Rather than rather than banging your drum, I mean, because that would just be unprofessional, you know, banging your drum to say this, that, and the other. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But but yeah. Uh, but there's, li- listen, the one thing about the story at the moment is it's not dull, is it? No, that is the that's one true. thing about the story at the moment is it's really not dull. Um, <laughs> when have and, we and, ever uh, been dull, though? Let's be honest, it's one extreme or the other with us. Never been dull under Wenger, to be fair. That's never true, been dull yeah. under Wenger. Been dull. It's been dull in the past. I mean, I was having a laugh yesterday because I remember, obviously, Brighton beat Arsenal 2-1. The last time Brighton beat Arsenal, I was there, 1982, at the Goldstone Grand. I grew up in Sussex. And my dad wasn't a massive football fan at all, but he took me because it wasn't far. And uh, we were sitting in the main stand, and I was, so I was 14. I turned around to say something to him really, you know, really full of tactics about, I don't know, Alan Sunderland or David <laughs> O'Leary or something. And he was fast asleep. He was fast asleep in his chair, in his seat, in the main stand. <laughs> and I like, I like jabbed him in the ribs. And I went, I just said, Dad, what are you doing? <laughs> How can you, you're in a football match. And he just went, this Arsenal team is so boring to watch. <laughs> which, they, which they were a bit. And I remember, I remember it's 1982 because it was the year of the World Cup in Spain. Yeah. This was about April time. That's the and first the guy one behind, I remember. Yeah, the guy behind us was Spanish and he was apoplectic that my dad had fallen asleep. Like you typical English, no wonder you're rubbish at football. You come to football, you fall asleep. Where's your enthusiasm? Where's your excitement? I mean, it was, it was absolutely hilarious. So was he, was, go, was your dad going with just because you wanted to go on? Yeah, did, he was. Yes. Oh, bless. That's yeah, very yeah. sweet. He, That's, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. We, we, we didn't go to, I mean, I, might, I probably went to four or five matches with him, literally. He supported West Ham. Well, he did. He sort of supported West Ham. He grew up in London and he grew up in an era where you'd go and watch Chelsea one week and Fulham the next because that's where he lived. But but for, from my memory, he I mean, he's been dead a long time. He supported West Ham because he loved Trevor Brooking. He oh, thought Trevor was a gentleman. Mm. Oh, and my so God. So, when, so wait, so when Trevor Brooking scored the winner against us. Oh, he thought it was the funniest thing that ever happened. He <laughs> thought it was the funniest thing that ever happened. <laughs> Oh, he just laughed for about two months. Oh. Um, and I've worked with Trevor a lot since. And I went, Trevor, and I went, Trevor, come, Trevor, you were trying to get out of the way, weren't you? Come on, Trevor, you didn't mean to head that, did you? 
And he was like, oh, you know, it was a typical. He said, all the cabbies, all the Arsenal cabbies say that to me, he said. But yeah, yeah. and I bought, I bought my dad, he used to wear a little West Ham badge, which I gave him, which he used to wear on his dressing gown. Oh, I always goodness. remember that. That's yeah. Awesome. So you were talking, you know, we were talking about, you know, both of us working TV and stuff. And it always amazes me. How do you manage to stay unbiased when you're reporting up? On us, when inside you must be going apoplectic and just going mental, um, especially. But it's quite easy to do, but it's quite easy to do because it's your job. Do you know what I mean? You wouldn't survive otherwise. No, that's you know what I mean. You wouldn't survive otherwise. So it's very easy to do. It's I I think most people who work in in uh, in 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 sport in football are going to support a team aren't they yes but they're not going to get they're not going to last very long if they if if they can't if they can't be professional and impartial they're really not so yeah. I, I think you know you have to come to that decision within yourself pretty quickly i was just not going to survive quite right you're not going to survive um and so that, that that bit's that bit's not hard that bit's not hard actually it really isn't and i don't think i think i mean everybody who's I think all the people I work with would say the same thing. You know what? They'd say the same thing. It's not. It's not hard because it's what you need to do. That's your job. Yeah, that's yeah. true. You've never slipped yeah. though. You've never slipped while no. you're on radio when they can't no. see you. <laughs> oh, I don't, I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> see, I know. I know. Yeah, you know. You know where all the bodies are buried so far. Remember that. <laughs> Well, they all are. But you work with Ian Wright and Lee Dixon. You've seen them when it goes wrong for us. Oh, right yes. <laughs> Have I ever. Yeah. So, apart from television being visual, what's the biggest difference between presenting on radio and on TV? TV just takes a long time. And what I mean by that is, you know, I'm doing radio Tuesday night. I'll go up to Manchester. I'll sit in the studio. I mean, I've done it for 25 years. So I'll put my headset on. You know, I'll write the scripts and we're off and running. You know, there's no faffing about. Whereas yeah. Sophia knows, you know, TV. It's a lot of rehearsal. I go through all the words and she changes my spelling. <laughs> and, then, you know, <laughs> and then I need a lot of makeup and then I need to know which camera to look at. And you have to you have to rehearse TV. Otherwise, it looks a mess. Yeah. But even okay. simple TV with three or four cameras, you have to rehearse it. So does it, t- it TV takes a long time yeah. and there are a lot of people involved in TV. Yeah. Mm. They're actually more different than I thought they would be in many ways. They're actually more different than I thought they would be in many ways for, for that reason, actually. Yeah. Because radio is so, I mean, TV is spontaneous once it starts. Once yes. the game starts, TV is spontaneous. But radio from the word go is spontaneous because people don't turn up and you decide to interview somebody else or you go somewhere else. And of course, you can do that so much more easily in radio. Yeah. You can just yeah. go, all oh, right, we're going to go over here now. We're going to go over here now. Yeah. <laughs> when, I, when I used to do Saturday afternoon on the radio, I mean, that's, that's what Saturday afternoon on the radio was. Yeah. We're going here, there and everywhere and it would change the whole time. So it, it's, it's much more. It's much more labour intensive TV than radio. Yeah. Well, speaking of your change to your Saturday afternoons, um, you you're on BT Sports Scores. Um, for those who don't know, it's BT's version of Sky Soccer Saturday, and, and it's far better, isn't it? It's, it's, it is fantastic. <laughs> we love it. We love it. Now, what 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 I always amazes me about you is that you have so much information to take in during the program. How do you take all that information, hold it all together, still, still divulge the information that the viewers want to see? How how do you manage all that? Well, I think I think the key is to, the key is to start listening to the most important bit of information. Do you right. know what I mean? Because you can get bombarded with stuff. I you know I grew up in a very noisy family, and I was I was you know <laughs> two big sisters, my mum and dad. Everybody had something to say normally at the same time, and you start to sort of <laughs> you start to sort of zone in. Who's the most important voice of out of these four right. who's talking to me at the moment? Uh, I, 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 honestly, I think <laughs> things like that. That's what you do. So you just start you start zoning in on what is the most important bits of those information. If you can get some information out straight away, mm-hmm. it gives you less chance to forget it. Right. You can write down other bits as well. Mm-hmm. But I, I, it, 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 it is. It, I know people think there's a great. I, I really believe this. People think there's a great mystery about doing live TV. It's like any job. It's air miles. It's practice. Now, obviously, I suppose you have to have a you know, a a reasonable amount of aptitude to do it in the first place. But it is like air miles. You know, the more you do it, the better at it you become. Yeah. And when you start, especially as 
program like score where there's a lot going on at the same time mm -hmm. it, it is difficult because there is a lot to take on but you you know if you if you shape your mind round to what you're listening you get a hang of it very quickly do you know when you can get a hang of it very quickly who's the most important person to listen to here what's the best way for me to retain this information you know even things like just hold a, a pen and a piece of paper close to hand you can write down the other stuff yeah that you haven't got time to say out immediately you get you can get a handle on it very quickly. So speaking of who's the most important person to voice to listen to, out of Chris Sutton and Robbie Savage, <laughs> <laughs> how the uh, who's the most the, the editor Matt Curtis? He's the most important voice to listen to. Very smart. You know, listen, they, they, very they, smart. They, but you know what I what I like about them as well is that. Um, is, you know, it's also entertainment, isn't it? Yeah. It is sport. It's not the end of the world. There's enough crap that goes on in the world, isn't it? It is entertainment. Uh, football, particularly, is people's release at the end of the week. We know, you know, Seema, with, you, with your Dubai now, we know how massively popular it is globally. I think you've got to remember mm. it's got to be a bit of fun as well. It, it is only sport. I know it's easy to say it's only sport because people love their clubs so much, but that's what it is when you see that everything else that is going on. And I think it's really important to remember that, that it is part of the entertainment business. You know, can't mm. just, and there's a time and a place as well, but it can't all be serious, serious all the time. And that's the other thing about presenting. You've got to be able to judge that. When's the time to be serious? You know, so far, you and I were on the night that, um, Roy Hodgson resigned after yes. he to Iceland. Well, that's the time to be serious. Yes, you know, this is not, exactly. that's not a time to piss about. You know, the England manager's resigned. Yeah. But, you know, there is, yeah. there is, there is, a, there is a time as well, uh, particularly on Saturday afternoon in a three-hour show, there's going to be a time for, for some fun too. Yeah. Yeah. We mm. love it. <laughs> yeah, it's a great show. It is a fantastic show to work on. Yeah, it and, is. You know, and the it more is. we do it, the better we get at it. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, for sure. You also front ITV's football coverage. What would you say you've learned working with ex-footballers as pundits in general? And what is it like working with Roy Keane? <laughs> Roy, people think that Roy's predictable. He's not. No. People think, oh, Roy's going to climb into X. It's normally Arsenal. People go, oh, he's going to give Arsenal a hard time. He's not predictable, actually. No. And that's, that's, what I really, that's what I really like about him. And I like the way he distills it down very quickly as well. Mm. Listen, it's an art. It's an art in itself when you're on commercial television, and uh, adverts are immovable objects because without adverts, none of us get paid. You know, you've got to you've got to condense it down pretty quickly to what you want to say. It's it's yeah. completely different. It's not Sky or BT's live coverage where they've got 45 minutes to fill or no. you know, lots of time. You've got to get on with it. Roy, Roy is Roy is Roy is not predictable. It's what I like about him. Lee is a brilliant analyst, oh, absolutely brilliant analyst. He really is. Lee. Love him. And and it's like you know they they say in boxing styles make fights. What I like about them is they all bring something different. Yes. You know, Roy Roy is Roy is not predictable, but the way he says it, particularly when he's got that beard, you're not going to argue with him. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you know, Lee Lee is a brilliant analyst, and particularly when it comes to England, you know, Wright is Mr. England, isn't he? He's Mr. Barometer. How's he going to feel? You know, I'm really looking forward to the World Cup with Wrighty, you know, because he'll be so excited when we do. I think we've got England Belgium's our first game, you know, because yeah. he's, he's um he's he's it's England. He absolutely loves England, yeah, he and does. they 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 all bring they all bring something different. And my job is to is to bring all those differences out in them as well, mm. play to their strengths. You know, it's my job is to play to their strengths. Simple as that. Well, because I re I mean, the thing I love about working with them as well and you is like quite you know. The, the public only get to see them in front of the camera and what they're talking about. Yeah. But quite often, I think the most interesting thing is when they're off camera because the things that they explain to us, oh, you yeah, know, yeah, when yeah. They, when, like when they're watching a game live and they're like saying, oh, he should do this and he should, and we're like, oh my God, because you don't notice it until they actually point it out and you sit. And we, I mean, I'd, I'd say both of us know football very well but then when you hear an ex-footballer talk about it, it it sometimes it just gives me goosebumps just listening to them because they just open your eyes to things you never have noticed before but no no the, i really like that i agree with you on that it's isn't really it good, it's, that is. it's amazing to watch but the thing i the other thing i really like is like if somebody told me like 10 or 20 years ago that i would be working with two of my heroes Lee Dixon and Ian Wright, I, I would never have believed it. And even now, I don't think there's, there's still a little part of me that still hasn't got over that. Do you still have pinch yourself moments when you work with the likes of Wright, Ian, Dicko? And, yeah, definitely. And of course and, I do. Absolutely. Know, Absolutely, I do. Can you uh, uh, remember uh, uh, one? 
Absolutely, I do. Um, I think the first time I met him actually, with when he was with when he worked with Mark Bright on the on the Five Live show, and I, and I worked with Lee a lot on radio as well. I remember going to Barcelona with Radio Five to watch a to watch an Arsenal game actually. Yeah. Oh no, no, I, I remember that very vividly. I'm thinking, okay, this is this this is fun. But I, I, what it's really interesting as you say so far, and I still do. I, try, I do it every game, every game. I just say, what's so they'll be they'll say something amongst themselves, and I'll go, what do you mean by that? You know. I particularly like saying to write it because I played up front, you know, when I was at school and at the University of Atlanta. So I like saying. Are you here. comparing I, yourself to Ian Wright? I think I am. Yes. I think I am. <laughs> so I like saying to him, I like saying to him, should he have done this or should he have done that? You know, because that was, you know, because that was the position I played in, and I like to hear what he has to say. It's really interesting. It's like all these things you learn. You learn from them. You ask them. You learn from them. You learn from mm. them. You know, when I when I watch the rugby, obviously I'm always asking them what they're doing there, what's this about. And the boxing the other day with Duke McKenzie and the Groves fight, and Nazim, the hilarious Nazim Hamed, you know, what what's all this about? You you learn so much by by listening. But you know, sometimes you are the sometimes, you know, you listen quietly in the corner for ten minutes and then, you know, just just then and then ask them exactly what it is that's going on. You you learn everything. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you mentioned the World Cup a bit earlier. With the World Cup coming up in Russia, what are your mo- what are you most looking forward to at the tournament on and off the pitch? Uh, what am I? Le- well, I'm. Re- I mean, you know, I am looking forward to England because because it's England. You never know, and because we do know because <laughs> you know, because because when when England lost to Iceland and we we did it live, yeah, Sapphire, we did. Sapphire, we had 17 million people watching. It was amazing. In day and age. Wow. Yeah. 17 million people watching. It was amazing. Wow. So uh, uh, I'm really looking forward to that because it's one of those rare moments where people sit down and watch telly together, isn't it? Yes. People, yeah. people sit down and watch telly together. Yeah. So we've got the game in the round of 16, I think. Haven't we? Yeah, we have. We've got England, Belgium, and then the game in the round of 16. Yeah. So assuming we get through. And Belgium. And Belgium. So I'm really looking forward to that. And I love, tra- I mean, to answer your other question, too, I love traveling. It's great to go to places. I've been to Moscow once before. Listen, mm-hmm. it's going to have its own particular... It's a particular challenge is getting around Moscow, isn't it? But yes. it's going to be, you yeah. know, it's fantastic to go to these places. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's the great boon of our job, mm. as Sophia knows, is to go to places and spend a bit of time there. What, I mean, once you start spending two or three weeks in a place, you begin to understand its heartbeat and what makes it tick and really what it's all about, which is, mm. which is what happened, obviously, when we went to Paris and all, you know, all the places we've been to, the major championships I've been to over the last 20 years in all sorts of sports. It's, oh, it's a complete boon, a total privilege to go, to go and find out and find out how people live there. I have a question. I am Belgian, so I really want to know what you think. Are we going to beat you? Or are you going to beat us? <laughs> <laughs> I, think you've got an ama- I think you've got an amazing squad, haven't you? You've got an amazing yeah. squad. Um, yeah, we do. But they're, they're too much. Oh, no, I, I, think think... It'll be, I think it'll be one all probably, won't it, Seema? I think it'll probably be one all. <laughs> it's got, it's got that I don't know. Over. I mean, I mean, do you think you can? Do you think you can win the World Cup? Uh, I think we. Yeah, actually, I think we can. Considering last season, last year, not last year, the last World Cup, it was our first World Cup in twelve years, I think. So we got very close. If it wasn't for that one messy goal against Argentina, pretty much close to the like last minute. So I feel like that was the only time we lost throughout the past, I think, year with Belgium. So I think we have a pretty good chance. Do you yeah, not think you're a team of individuals? Because that's what I find with yeah. Belgium. I think that really, that you've got so many good, and I think you need Martinez to get you playing like a team and exactly. I'm not sh- I'm Wilmot not sure he has Wilmot. at the moment has he no thing is we had Wilmot for so long with Wilmot we were individual we were as if I was playing but <laughs> <laughs> but with Martinez I feel like we can do a lot better listen team. you've got all the tools haven't you you've got all the tools mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. I mean, look, look at, I mean, we, we, we know you've got in this country alone, but, 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 but all, you know, all around the, all around the Europe and around the world. I mean, yeah. I wouldn't say it's now or never, but here, here's a chance. You, you were disappointed in the last World Cup, weren't you? Yeah, very. Really. I saw a couple of your games. You never really got going. You were disappointed. Yeah, we were winning. We were just winning, but not very convincingly, no. unfortunately. No, exactly. So, Pukas, how far do you think England are going to get, realistically? I think we'll get to the quarterfinals. You do? Yeah, I do. I don't know why. Oh. 
Who are we going to play in the last 16? Is it? I think it's Colombia or Poland, assuming we do that. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah. Co- yeah. but remember, Colombia had a good run in the um, South oh, America I know. qualifying. I know. Listen, I'm, I, I, know I'm, I know I'm saying that in a very sort of English, oh, yes, we're going to do well way. <laughs> 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 you know, are we really, is, there, is there really evidence that we're going to do that? But I just... I just I, the, the thing is... I, I remember Italia 90 incredibly well, and I remember Euro 96 incredibly well. Yeah, much me as we too. love club football, and it's brilliant. And much as we love the Champions League, and it's brilliant, there is still nothing quite like England doing well to completely take over the mood of the place. <laughs> there really isn't. Mm. Yeah, that's true. There really isn't. It's it's you know it is it is it is it's it's absolutely fantastic. So I'd lo- I'd love to see I'd love to see it. I'd absolutely love to see it. It would mm. just be, you know, be something else, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah. it would. It's time to have a bit of fun now. We'll be doing a quick fire round. We'll ask you a set of questions and you need to respond fast. So as soon as I say three, two, one, uh, you'll go. Okay. Are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Okay, three, two, one. So, Pugas, television or radio? Oh! <laughs> well, without radio, I would still be picking my nose somewhere, so radio. Okay. 1989 <laughs> or 2004 Invincibles? 1989. Oh, who do you think would win in a fight, Dicko or Wrighty? <laughs> <laughs> Dicko, he'd, pun- he'd pinch him. He'd just go around pinching Wrighty. <laughs> <laughs> Arsenal win okay, Arsenal win the Champions League or England win the World Cup. England win the World Cup. I knew you was gonna say that. Who would you like to play you in the film about your life? <laughs> <laughs> you know I love my films. Um Oh yeah, you love your films, don't you? I do. Well, when I was a bit younger people said well, do you know who they say I look like now, don't you? Who do they say you look like now? Oh. Jeremy Kyle. Oh no, you're better looking than him. <laughs> oh God. Um, um, uh, uh, oh, hang on, I'm not answering this very quickly. Come Am on, I? come on. Uh, no. <laughs> Anthony Andrews, because someone said I looked like him when I was younger. Okay. A footballer you wish had played for Arsenal. Graham Souness. If you could change a moment in Arsenal history, what would it be? <clears throat> Thierry Henry clean through in Paris at oh, 1-0. Oh, God, don't even mm. start. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Wenger or Graham? Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Graham. Okay, you can only keep one in the team, Henri or Bergkamp? Uh, Bergkamp. Yeah. North Bank or Clockhand at Highbury? North Bank. Football or rugby? Football. Dinner with the Queen or Prince Charles? Oh, Prince Charles. It's hilarious. <laughs> it's so indiscreet. <laughs> EastEnders or Coronation Street? Can I walk the dogs? Uh, oh. EastEnders. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Win the Ballon d'Or or an Oscar? Oh, an Oscar. Oh, wouldn't an Oscar be great? Oh, God, I'd love to win it. Did you see <laughs> yeah. Kobe Bryant won one? Really? Last Frances week. McDormand one. I was so pleased about Did that. Did you see what her speech? Film. Sorry. No, no, I didn't. Apparently it was amazing. It really, really film. was. But I digress. Sorry about that. Yeah. <laughs> it's fine. We're done anyway. <laughs> oh, look at that. But, so, but before Oscar. we let you go, we just want to do quick predictions for AC Milan away and Watford at home. Uh, first, we're going to hear from Amanda. Hi, girls. Sorry I can't be with you tonight, but these are my predictions. So, AC Milan away on Thursday. I can only see a loss here, I'm afraid, and I think it's going to be 3-1. And then we play Watford, uh, half past one kickoff on Sunday. And you know what? I'm going to go against the grain and I'm going to go for Arsenal 2, Watford 1. Let's just hope (laughs) we can start our winning ways soon. Take care, girls. Bye. And now if we can get Sophie's prediction. 
Hey girls, sorry to miss the show and Mark today. I'm sure you guys have had quite an interesting conversation considering the state of our club. I'm not too confident about uh, our game against Milan on Thursday under Gattuso. They are completely reborn, uh, unbeaten in 13 and have hardly conceded too many goals either. I think we'll lose that 3-1. Uh, against Watford, uh, hopefully if our players find any balls whatsoever to get back at Troy Deeney for how he spoke about us after they beat us earlier on in the season, that would be nice. But I don't hold out much hope for that either. I'm the girl who had all the hope and some of that, most of it, has gone. So I think a draw there, 2-2, two -two, it's not going to be easy. And I don't know, it's just not good right now, not good at all. And Sophia, what do you think? So, do you agree with them? Well, yeah, I agree with them. Um, I don't actually think we're going to even score because they both think we're going to score. But I can't really... When was the last time we scored a goal? I can't... I Against actually... Oh, oh yeah, yeah, and we lost that oh, too. Oh, no, no, Up in my hang, up in my hang. Oh, yeah, sorry. You're both Brighton, but we lost that too as well. But yeah. um, I, don't, I, I don't think we're going to score against Milan. I think it's the way that they're playing. They're playing really well. I... I'm like Amanda and Sophie. I totally expect to lose, and I think we're going to lose two nil. Um, and if and that's me being kind. I think it's actually going to be more, but that's that's me oh, trying wow. to be my that's my positive side going for only two nil. <laughs> and then for Watford, um, I'd norm if we because we're at home. We've we've had quite a good record at home this season. Because if it wasn't for our home record, we'd be even worse. Because the fact we've only won three away is just an embarrassment but anyway doing predictions I I'd usually go for a win but the way we're playing I'd say a draw and I'm going to go for a 1-1 draw mm. and Mark what do you think I think Milan will win 2-1 I think Arsenal will get a goal <laughs> and I think Arsenal will be rocking defensively but but I think we'll just give them a chance and I think I think that Arsenal will beat Watford 2-1. I think, as I was saying earlier about the Europa League, I think they've got to actually now sort of stop moping about the Champions League and all that and pull their finger out, otherwise the Europa League is going to go. And that will have an impact. That will have an impact financially. So I think uh, I think Arsenal win 2-1 against Watford. Cool. I actually think I agree as well. I think 2-1 against Mil uh, Milan will win 2-1 and we will win 2-1 against Watford. I hope. I really, really hope. Yeah, but you're always <laughs> positive. You always think we're going to win. I know. <sighs> well, no, not against Milan. <laughs> yeah, but... I know. Anyway, uh, Mark, it has been amazing having you on, and we've taken a lot of your time already, but thank you so much for joining us today. N my pleasure. We hope you've enjoyed the sun continues to shine. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Well, I hope here. Fantastic. <laughs> It's been great, and I know, and I know, Sophia now won't, won't, won't be putting bloopers in the script next time we work in. Uh, when are we working next? Next week? <laughs> we? no, this week? Yeah, Wednesday, Champions. Wednesday, oh, Wednesday Champions League. Yeah, who, who's, who's <laughs> playing on Wednesday night? Oh, that's you. That's Tottenham Juve. That's going to be a oh, good game. God. Oh yeah. yeah. I'll have to keep. I'll have to keep Sophia quiet from keep. chanting for Juve. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I never. I never. I, I don't, they all know who I support, and all, and yeah. they all know who I hate. So. I just get it. when now that Arsenal are having a nightmare, I'm getting it in the neck, but I can take it. Can take yeah, because it. it's all part of the fun. Listen, it's all pantomime in the end, isn't exactly. it? It's all, it's all pantomime in the end. It is. But thank you so much for coming on. Food. My pleasure. You know pleasure, Safar. So pleasure, Seema. All right. I'll see you soon. Bye. You can take hang care. Bye. 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 Okay. So before we let you go, uh, we need to quickly remind you of our social media handles. On Twitter, we're Highbury Heels. Facebook, Instagram, SoundCloud, YouTube are Highbury and Heels. Uh, don't With forget we're on, said, ACAST, we're on ACAST as well. ACAST as well, yeah. With that said, we hope you enjoyed listening. And please share your feedback on all of our channels or whatever channel that you're on. And hope we hope you have an amazing week. And don't forget, always Arsenal. Hey, I'm Jules Breach. Hi, I'm Adrian Charles. Hi, I'm Jason Candy. Hi, my name's Lee Dixon. I'm Alan Smith. Hi, I'm Ryan Giggs. Hello, I'm Matt Lucas. Hi, I'm Andrew from Ars Blog. I'm Gary Lineker, and you're listening to Highbury and Heels. <laughs>